Good afternoon and welcome back to the Daughter Arise channel. Hope that you are feeling well today and feeling good. I'm feeling absolutely wonderful but it is freezing down here in South London so I've got the heating on and I've just been busy today um, working on some stuff and really kind of preparing for next year. But in a few days time I shall be doing nothing but relaxing with my family because as you know we are in the Christmas season and it is a really important time of year for a lot of people including myself because for me personally as a Christian you know this marks a time of, of symbolic remembrance because Jesus was born during this time um, a lot of people may argue it wasn't in December and stuff, but the world recognises this time and Christians recognise this time as a time to remember Jesus and, you know, God giving us his life as a gift to the world. But for a lot of people, Christmas is a very difficult time and um, for survivors in particular, Christmas is a time where all the feelings of um, what they have been through, um, family relationships and everything else is heightened. And this is something that I struggled with myself as a survivor of sexual abuse. Um, I remember very clearly during my childhood the Christmases. I wrote about this in my autobiography, Daughter Arise, which, by the way, is going to be re-released in January this year, and I will be doing a small, uh, you know, launch on this channel again because it's a uh, updated um, edition. But in my book, I talked about the significance of significance of Christmas. I started off loving Christmas as a child. You know, I remember my mum cooking, I remember, you know, the wonderful breakfasts that she would cook and Christmas Eve, because I grew up in the 80s, I was born in 1976, but I grew up in the 80s and I remember a lot of wonderful things from that time and I remember the Christmas Eve um, preparation my mum would do, wrapping our presents and us being excited and you know, the after eight mints and, uh, you know, the, the food and everything else that you would have, you know, all the snacks. Um, it was such a wonderful time in my home, you know, Christmas Eve and around the Christmas season. And of course, you know, we had the Christmas toys, you know, the rainbow brights, the transformers, um, the Cabbage Patch dolls. I don't know if any of you were born in the 80s who remember these uh, toys, but, you know, I remember all of it, you know, and um, it was just such a wonderful time, um, you know, the Christmases during 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 those during those times. But as I got older, um, especially from the age of nine years old, Christmases were not the same for me. And I wanted to be able to share this with you because, you know, Christmas in itself has this ideal image of being picturesque, you know, cosy families, presents, loving, giving, everybody, um, you know, together and, you know, just a wonderful family time. And in a sense, yes, it was um, up until the age of nine. But once my father started to sexually abuse me, all that changed. Um, I particularly remember one Christmas, um, I was 10 years old and I started to develop um, breasts and I started to develop because I was starting to go through puberty and I, by that time I'd already been sexually abused by him for a year and I remember lying on my bed and I felt so old, I felt so worn, I felt depressed even though at the time I didn't recognise the word depression because I was only 10 but I felt so down. I was crying and everything, you know, and during the holiday season, because schools were out um, and I wasn't at school, my father would, the, the sexual abuse would increase, would, would increase because of the holidays. And, you know, I used to have to try and wear this mask, you know, to hide what was going on, you know, being hyper, being happy over you know, just being over the top in order to compensate for how I felt inside. 
and um, it's something I wrote about in one of my um, one of my blog posts. Um, you can find that on my website, um, Daughter Arise. But I wrote a article back towards the end of 2016 called The Mask. And in that piece, I shared a picture, the exact picture of, of the exact time that I'm talking to you about now, of me at 10 years old in that picture. And what happened was I was crying on my bed and my sister came up and got me and said, Dad wanted to take pictures of me and stuff like that. And I remember I think, I don't want to take pictures. I just want to be left alone. I just wanted to be left alone. I just wanted my own space. Um, but obviously, living in the household that I lived in, you never made my dad ask you twice to do something. So I got up, I went downstairs, I took these pictures, he had his Kodak camera, I put on the fake smile, but inside I was absolutely dying. And um, that for me just marked my kind of relationship with Christmas from that age going upward, you know. I hated Christmas. I hated it. I hated what it represented. Especially because, you know, as I entered into the care system at 13, Christmas was completely destroyed for me. You know, progressively from the Christmas that I, the Christmases that I told you that I loved for, to the age of nine when they started to go wrong. And then going into care at 13, my gosh, Christmas was absolutely so painful. I felt rejected. I felt lonely. I felt isolated. I felt odd. I felt like I didn't belong, I felt vulnerable, especially because as my family had already ostracised me, you know, relationships were strained, were strained in me speaking out about my abuse. Um, I didn't really have relationships with my brother and sister, not because of anything to do with them, but to do with my father. Um, my mum obviously took my father's side and kind of um, didn't really interact with me that much in care. And here I was in strangers' homes, yes, there were foster parents and there were kids' homes, but nobody that I ever had as a foster parent claimed me as their own. There was only one particular woman when I first came into care and my first placement broke down who wanted to see if she could foster me. Um, and I always have love in my heart for her and her family, but I was just so damaged and dysfunctional. It only lasted a few months. And I remember having one Christmas with her and, you know, I know that they loved me and everything, but that feeling that you take from going through abuse and being feeling alienated and ostracised, and you've got to remember I was young still, you know, as I've shared in other videos, it wasn't until my 20s that I started to kind of put the dots together about the disconnect I felt in myself about sexual abuse. So at the time, I had all these feelings going on within me, feeling rejected, broken, isolated, but not knowing really it was connected to do with my experience of sexual abuse. I just felt hurt and pain and rejection. And being moved around in care a lot, you know, I felt so like I didn't belong. Christmases in care were horrible, I'm not going to lie. Um, I never felt like I belonged in any family or any kind of residential home that I was in. You know, um, some of the other kids got to go home for Christmas or to relatives and I spent my majority of mine in these type of places. And it's really hard to feel in a family setting when you're, you, you're not within your own family. Um, so I spent a lot of time being depressed and feeling down and um, crying. You know, Christmas is really hard. And even after I left the care system, I still hated Christmas. I really did and um, it just was a time for me to try and even more bury what I was feeling inside by drinking or smoking weed or whatever it was, you know, to try and cope with the, the rejection and pain and isolation that I felt. Um, feeling indifferent when you've gone through sexual abuse is something that a lot of survivors struggle with and in me sharing my story, I realised that, you know, from talking to other survivors and from um, seeing other things that people have, have, have put out there, that it's not just something that I struggled with, other people struggle with it. Christmas time is really, really hard. Um, for, for, for survivors, for people who have been through sexual abuse, you know, 
there was a lot of different kind of reasons why Christmas is hard for them. I explained to you about my feelings of isolation and despair, which intensified because of the sexual abuse episodes that used to happen at home over Christmas. And those kind of memories for me, those good memories, those happy memories that I had of Christmas at five, six, became tarnished and ruined because of these memories that I had of my father violating me over the Christmas. For others, it is the same thing. For others, um, because of their kind of implications and the stigma attached to sexual abuse, a lot of families don't deal with the situation. It doesn't go anywhere, you know, um, and men and women, you know, have to live with what had happened to them as a child, you know, and within their family circle, their, you know, family friend circle. So we have a lot of people who are feeling isolated at this time of year. There are people who, the, the person who's abused them is still a really big part of that, those family occasions. So they'll go around at Christmas and see this person who abused them or whatever, drinking and laughing like they've done nothing wrong. And um, the family, you know, will, might turn and say to them, because obviously it makes them feel away, you know, and makes them feel angry and hurt and unsettled. And, you know, other members of the family will see them and say, oh, you know, cheer up or smile or whatever it's Christmas or whatever just because it is Christmas doesn't mean everybody is happy for, for a lot of people Christmas signifies pain hurt and loss you know and to have to go around to a family occasion like Christmas and see the person who has abused you there drinking laughing while you've had to carry this enormous trauma and pain for so long is insulting and is absolutely it's painful, it's absolutely painful, you know. Other people, they've been ostracised from their family. You know, um, they spoke out or they've tried to mention something. They're no longer welcome around the house. So Christmas for them means trying to spend it with their friends or family. Not their family, but other people who are not the people they really love and hold close to them, who they want to spend Christmas with um, because of, you know, they've been ostracised, you know, from, from the family. And um, every Christmas for them involves trying to see who they can spend it with. It is really painful for a lot of people. And these are just some of the reasons why Christmas is difficult. You know, memories, triggers, you know, memories can get triggered by uh, different things, you know, to do with that time of year as well. And, you know, people do find it really hard. One of the big things, one of the common denominators between all my experience and the experiences of others that I know that have been through sexual abuse is the feeling of isolation and rejection. And if you are someone who knows, you know, a survivor of sexual abuse, you know, I want to encourage you to support them during this season. You know, it is no secret that during the Christmas holiday, not just with this issue of sexual abuse, um, you know, other people are going through other tough times as well, whether it's loss of, loss of a loved one, um, difficult relationships and, um, and things like that. Christmas is one of those times of year where there is a high proportion of suicides. And, you know, for people, a lot of the time, um, some people find it hard to open up and express how they're really feeling because they feel like, you know, they've, especially with sexual abuse as well, I'm speaking from, from this experience, that when you are in pain and you are hurting and you're continuing to hurt, it lets out itself in different ways. And for some people, you're not getting over it quick enough. You keep going on about it, you know, and people see that who have been through it and they think, okay, I'm going to keep it to myself. So what happens is, a lot of people do automatically do keep things to themselves, but then there's those who've tried to share or tried to express how they feel and have been shut down. So they won't open up and tell anybody um, anything else about how they're feeling. And if you know somebody that has been through sexual abuse, I want to encourage you to try and support them over this Christmas season. It doesn't have to be big things. It could be little things like asking how they're feeling. I know because this picture that is painted of Christmas is happy, jolly, no problems, no cares, no worries, but that is not a realistic picture for a lot of people. People have more time because it's Christmas, they're away, a lot of people are away from work, have more time to ponder, reflect and think about things 
that, you know, otherwise in other times they'd be busy avoiding. So, you know, one of the things I would say is to try and support support your friend or support your loved one by just listening to them. It, I know it's a bit of a downer to want to hear those things, but this is real life for a lot of people. You know, um, it's not picture perfect, but this is real life for a lot of people. So I would encourage you to just listen to them. Um, you know, and hug, you know, if they allow you to give them a hug, you know, and just listen. You know, that's one of the things I think that is really helpful. If we can just, if you are somebody who's got somebody in your life that's been for this, just to listen to them. And, you know, you don't have to have the answers. Sometimes it might just be having that, giving them that space to be able to share and just listening to them and not having to provide solutions. Um, there are helplines out there that can support um, survivors of sexual abuse. Obviously, we have the Samaritans, which is open most times of the year, um, which can also provide a listening ear if you are a survivor. But I think if you are somebody that knows somebody, just doing these little things, um, if you know that you know there are these issues within the family and you know that they're not um, going to have anybody to, to spend Christmas with or have a Christmas dinner with or something, you know, this is the season, as they say, of goodwill. You know, try inviting them round. What I mean, you know, if you can, you know, you know, show them that empathy, invite them round, you know, and share maybe a Christmas meal with them. That that is something also as well that would be nice. It's not that people who have been through sexual abuse are looking for sympathy, but empathy is important because you know, as somebody who's been through sexual abuse, I can say, you know, you um, the person who's been through it has been through enough trauma as it is already. And what they're really actually looking for is just someone to be there for them and to accept them. And yes, no one, if you've not been through it yourself, no one's expecting you to understand what rejection feels like, what feeling isolated feels like, what feeling violated at Christmas feels like. But it's a vulnerable and sensitive time for people. I recently shared um, on my Twitter page that I used to hate Christmas. Absolutely hate, I hate Christmas for so many years. I didn't care about what the season signified. I didn't care about what it meant for other people. Once the Christmas came, I felt bitter. I felt angry because, you know, of what was taken from me. And I've had to work through those feelings um, about that. But what has really helped me to love Christmas, first of all, is that I'm a born again Christian and I love Christ. I love Jesus. And knowing what he did for me on the cross and how he gave his life for me and how through him, through him, I found hope, has given me hope in my life, hope in my circumstances, hope that I can overcome the challenges. And I have been on this journey for 33 years and I have overcome so many things. And also as well, not only my faith in Jesus Christ, but also as well, my children. Both of my children renewed my love for Christmas. With my first child, obviously, I used to take her to see Santa. Um, I'd be involved in buying her presents. I used to replicate some of the things of those happy Christmases that I had that I remembered from five, six years old. So having music on over the Christmas season, whether that is festive music, reggae, you know, cooking nice dinners. Um, and with my, you know, again, with my second daughter, you know, when I got married, um, you know, and we are a family unit, being able to actually try and make my children's Christmases wonderful and being able to give that love. It's not about the presents and that, but being able to spend that togetherness, that family time, because that is another area which I really struggled with, with, with because I kept myself in isolation a lot of the time. And Christmas helped um, doing these things for my kids at Christmas really helped me to start to love and appreciate Christmas and appreciate the meaning behind it. You know, um, showing love and kindness to others and stuff. And yes, I still have my challenges, but I can honestly say over the last 10 or so years, Christmas has been a really nice time for me. I enjoy spending it with my family. I enjoy seeing my family and friends. You know, this week I'm going to be out and about doing different things with my family. Um, you know, I'm going to be going to a couple of net Christmas networking events. So for me, I enjoy, I enjoy, I do enjoy this season now. 
And if you don't, don't be hard on yourself. Mine has been a process and therapy and different things, as I said, my faith, my family, support have helped me to get to this stage. You know, if you are somebody that finds Christmas difficult, don't be hard on yourself. You know, take it one step at a time. Um, take one day at a time. You know, um, I know as it intensifies, the feelings can really intensify the anxiousness about the Christmas season. But what I will, what I would like to suggest to you is to find one little thing that you enjoy doing. Um, you know, for, for 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 me, sometimes I like to knit. I know I don't look like somebody that likes knitting, but that's something again that I remember from my childhood. My mum taught me how to knit and she taught me how to do these different things but find one thing that you enjoy doing that you enjoy doing any time of the year whether that is um, going for walks knitting going for a coffee um, watching your favorite movie your favorite TV program writing poetry find something that will help you to um, that is like your calm space over this Christmas period um, I know it's the Christmas Eve, the Christmas Day and the Boxing Day, especially the Christmas Day and the Boxing Day can be hard for a lot of people and even this whole season can, but try and find one thing that you enjoy doing. There are um, helplines, as I said, out there, like Samaritans that are there over the Christmas season um, that um, can help you during this time. And I will post any other links that I find that of um, helplines that help survivors of sexual abuse or helplines in general where you can ring up and have a little chat if you need to if you haven't got somebody there that you can talk to um, but I just wanted to do this video to say to you you know you're not alone in this I've been there I understand how difficult it is but it can and will get it can and will get better yes there are certain little things that help with that but you know um, sometimes we have to face our trauma face the things that we've been through first and in doing that it releases the pain and it then things start to get better it's like that pressure valve that i've talked about before you know the pressure the secrecy the not being able to really deal with the issues surrounding the abuse all builds up but if we can just release that pressure valve whether going therapy talking to people writing it down getting it out getting our voice out there it can help things to get easier and with that other things that were hard get easier like christmas um, like you know different things so you know I, those are my suggestions to you so thank you for watching this video um, I, if you want any other information um, about um, dealing with Christmas there are plenty of resources out there on the internet also as well I write, I write a blog called hope in the future um, and that's on my website www.daughterarise.org.uk I write topics and on different I write um, blogs on different issues surrounding topics surrounding sexual abuse and um, encouraging trying to encourage people who've been through it as well so please feel free to check it out check out my other videos on this channel i talk about a range of different things cover news stories topics to do with sexual abuse also as well i share my experiences and you know try and provide little pointers and and help tips to um, support you and in the left and right corner you will see the daughter rise logo which is for subscribing to this channel and also in the other corner you will see a video maybe a video you haven't seen before um, that you might want to watch and if you know anybody that's been through these issues please please forward these videos onto them please encourage them to check out my channel and I will see you in the next video. Take care.